Retrosynthesis is going to be the topic in this lesson, and we'll look at it in the context of the alpha substitution reactions with enols and enolates that we've been looking at all chapter long. Now, don't let it be lost on you that we've learned a few new ways of making carbon-carbon bonds in this chapter, and that's really important. And we started with like alpha alkylation, but the aldol, the clasin, those are ways of making new carbon-carbon bonds that we haven't seen before. And again, we only have a handful of ways. You might only have two or three, like the Grignard that you've learned before now. So a few new ones here, super, super important from a retrosynthesis perspective. Now this lesson is part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new one or when I come out with a new playlist, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so let's start off with our first retrosynthesis problem here. And here we've got cyclohexanone and Here's our final product, and it's not hard to match up the, the carbons on this reactant with the carbons on this product, being that they're cyclic and stuff like this. And we can see that we've got to form this lovely carbon-carbon bond right here. Let me draw that a little better. Carbon-carbon bond right here. All right, and if you look at where that's located, so uh, it's not on the alpha carbon like we'd expect for most of the things going on in this chapter. It's actually on the beta carbon. And then alarm bell should be going off in your mind and be like, oh, it's at the beta carbon, alkyl group, a carbon carbon out of the beta carbon. That's what occurs in Michael reactions. And so you're going to want to design your synthesis around a Michael reaction where we do nucleophilic addition to a conjugated carbonyl. And so in this case, that conjugated carbonyl has got to be this guy. And if you wanted to make a carbon-carbon bond, you weren't going to use a Grignard now, because Grignards typically still attack the carbonyl carbon. What you wanted to use was one of those organocuprates, a Gilman reagent. And so in this case, that's what we're going to do. In this case, it's an ethyl group we want to attach. So we'll attach CH3, CH2, to CULI. That's our uh, lithium dialkyl cuprate, and followed by an acid workup step. So, and that's how we'd pull that off. So the big thing then is to shorten up our synthesis. We've got to form an alkene. Well, we know how to form alkenes. Alkenes most commonly are formed in elimination reactions. Well, to do elimination, we have to have a, a leaving group, either in the alpha or beta positions. Well, this chapter is all about the alpha carbon mostly. And so we definitely know how to do alpha halogenation. So likelihood of us having gotten, say, a bromine or a chlorine in that alpha position are high. So, in fact, we can kind of go back here and have known this would have worked. And whether we do it under acidic or basic conditions is really up to us. I'm going to do it under acidic conditions and use trifluoroacetic acid. I know it'll only go once, but we could have used just one equivalent of Br2 and one equivalent of base and accomplished the same thing. And then in this case, we just want to do the elimination reaction. And so we're going to want to use a strong base to do E2 elimination. Um, and I might recommend a bulky base, although the really the only place we can form that alkene is right here. And he's secondary. So the, the truth is substitution is not the most likely reaction on a secondary uh, halide. So whether you go bulky base or not, I'll use potassium t-butoxide. So, but you're going to get this alkene. If you use like sodium methoxide or even sodium hydroxide, still would have been your major product here. All right, so we've got our alkene. We've done uh, conjugate addition here with our Michael reaction, and that's your entire synthesis. It's one, two, three steps, and not a lot of alternatives to what we've done here based on the, the summer reactions you've learned. And again, I said, the later you get in this course, the more options you're going to have to do some of these synthesis problems. But this chapter might stand out as a, a, a counterexample to that. You've learned a lot of new things that really don't have a lot of analogous stuff earlier in the course. And so you might see some unique synthesis in this chapter that maybe you don't have a lot of ways of accomplishing. All right, in this next synthesis problem, once again, it's not difficult to match up the carbons in our reactant with the carbons in our product based on the ring. So we can also see that we need to make this lovely carbon-carbon bond right here. One of the important things we need to highlight in any retrosynthesis problem. Uh, but you should also recognize your, your product here and look at this and say, oh, it's a beta dicarbonyl. And making a beta dicarbonyl, that should have alarm bells going off in your head. And that's what occurs when you do a clasin. And so if we kind of look at a clasin, a clasin is where an enolate attacks an ester. An enolate attacks an ester. Well, if I separate the two sides here, we're going to have this guy, 
and this guy. And this is the side with the alpha carbon attaching. So it's this side that actually has to be the enolate. This side would have to be the ester. So I'm just going to put OR to be the ester. And that's how we'll kind of pattern our synthesis. So in this case, we'd want to start off with, say, this guy, because that's what our reactant is going to be turning into. So, and we'd add uh, maybe LDA to deprotonate and form the enolate 100%. And then we'd have to add our ester. And in this case, it doesn't really matter what the R is. So I'm just going to make it a methyl group and make it as short as possible. But it's really kind of arbitrary. That's just the leaving group. It could have been a, a methoxy group, an ethoxy group, whatever. So, and then we always finish off the clays with H3O plus, because when you form that beta dicarbonyl under basic conditions, it gets deprotonated and you've got to reprotonate it with a little acid workup. Cool, so there's our clays in. So we just need to make this ketone. And all of a sudden this synthesis should look a whole lot easier because we just have a secondary alcohol here. We want to turn it into a ketone and we definitely learned how to pull that off. So, and you can do this with chromic acid or PCC. I'm going to use chromic acid just because I have lots of space here, but you might have just used PCC as well. And so you could look at this as a two-step synthesis because really this is just one Claisen reaction. Or I guess you could, you know, try and milk it and be like, whoa, Chad, that's four steps. But it's probably just a two-step synthesis. So it looks a little challenging, especially when you start inc incorporating your Claisens or your aldols into your summer syntheses, but it really is just this simple. All right, last synthesis problem here, and I put a little twist on this one. We're starting with propene here, which has three carbons, and you can see that your product here has six carbons, but the twist is in the instructions. And the instructions on in this one say to show the reagents necessary to convert this reactor to this product, but propene is the only carbon source allowed. So all six carbons in your product have to come from propene. So in this case, if our product's got six carbons and our Propene here's got three carbons. We're going to need two propenes to pull this off. So that's one thing. Second thing is if you look at this product here, you should recognize that, oh, our product here is a conjugated ketone or an enone or, or an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. And bells should be going off in your head and be like, oh, that's what you get when you do an aldol. And it's this alpha beta unsaturated bond that you end up making. And so we're going to pattern the synthesis around the aldol that would create this. And if we kind of take a look at this here, so you got two perspectives you could start it with. So, but this side over here, we'll just kind of draw it relative to the way it's shown here, is going to be your nucleophile is going to form the enolate. So, but this side over here used to have a double bond to oxygen. So let's make a little room here. Should have left my, some spell, myself some space there. It's going to be the aldehyde. Now, when you're doing the aldol, the first thing you need to do uh, uh, is add your base. And in this case, if we look at this, we've got analyzable hydrogens here and here. And the truth is the aldehyde ones are more acidic. And so in this case, using a regular strong base like NaOH or NaOME or something like that might not be the best choice because you got multiple types of enolyzable hydrons. Now you do have one more reactive electrophile because aldehydes are more reactive than ketones, but your best bet truth be told is still to use LDA in this strategy. So in this case, we're going to use LDA first. It's going to convert our reactant ketone here completely to enolate. That way he's the only nucleophile and then we'll add the aldehyde, which would then be the only electrophile. All right, finally, we'll polish this off with a little either acid or base and heat like any aldol if we want the condensation to occur. And we've got the alkene there, so we definitely want the condensation to occur. And that's it. That's the reaction. So we'd have the enolate come and attack the carbonyl. So if, you know, the, the mechanism is long, but, you know, stepwise, the aldol is just a single reaction with three sets of reagents. So you could, I guess you could look at it as three steps, but it's really one, you know, reaction here. So there's your aldol. So we see we've really got to make two things here. We've got to make our ketone here, acetone, and then we've got to make our propanol here as well. Both, again, of our car all our carbons have to be accounted for as coming from propene here. So we've really got two syntheses then. We've got to have one feeding into our uh, aldehyde there and one feeding into our ketone as well. And again, both originating from this guy. And uh, 
In this case, how do we make a ketone? Well, one of the ways we can make a ketone is from the corresponding alcohol, which is nice because when I look at my alkene, I can turn an alkene into an alcohol. Now, in this case, it would be Markovnikov, and I can pull that off with either acid catalyzed hydration or oxymercuration demercuration. Uh, easier for me is just to use acid catalyzed hydration. And so in this case, it's dilute H2SO4. Uh, and then to oxidize the secondary alcohol to a ketone, again, is either chromic acid or PCC. And I'm a little short on space here, so I'm just going to write PCC, make my life easier. Now to make the aldehyde, we could take the same approach here from a three carbon source here. And in this case, made from a primary alcohol and to oxidize the primary alcohol to the aldehyde, you have to use PCC. You can't use chromic acid. Chromic acid would oxidize the primary alcohol all the way to the carboxylic acid. And this is just the addition of water across the alkene, but anti-Markovnikov. And so you have to do hydroboration oxidation. Cool, but that's your synthesis. So a uh, little bit different, you know, way to kind of phrase a synthesis problem because you've actually got, you know, two branches to this synthesis. You've got to make the acetaldehyde, which takes a couple steps. You've got to make the acetone, which takes a couple steps. And then you combine the two in an aldol to get that final product. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? One of the best things you can do to make sure other students get to see this lesson on YouTube as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you're looking for practice problems on alpha substitution reactions, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.